Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the uh, Revell release of the 1969 Chevy Nova Yenko version in 125th scale. It's kit number 85-4423 in the current Street Burner series. It's a re-release as it's seen multiple box arts in the past. The kit's a skill level 5 for ages 14 and above and requires glue and paint for assembly. The quality of this kit is still quite good and it's a real nice build with lots of detail if you're looking for a contest quality base. You get 111 parts molded in white chrome clear and vinyl tires with metal axle pins. The motor and chassis have crisp detailing and they're in multiple parts allowing you to finish in detail easily. The interior has separate door panels and multiple parts and decals for ease of detailing too. The body is crisply molded with few blemishes and the decals are a high quality water slide variety with two color options. You, alas, do get typical no brand tires. The overall dimensions are length 7.5 inches, width 2 and 7 8 inches, and height 2 and 1 8 inch. Here are the decals for this build. The color is very good and the registry is very good. There's a, just a small carrier around the decals and they go on well but I prefer to use a uh, setting solution uh, just to help them settle uh, and conform to the body's contours. For the rest of this kit you know I'll be using mostly Model Master liquid cement sometimes for uh, strength I use some super glue and some clear white glue for window glass. The paint is usually acrylic bottle paints that are um, either airbrushed or some variety of rattle can paints um, but I do a lot of airbrushing for the uh, superior finish, but you can use whatever works for you. Now we'll turn to the motor. Assemble the block, the oil pan, and the heads, and then paint that red. The intake is aluminum. The water pump is steel colored. The belt will be a rubber color and with black pulleys, and the fan is black too. The exhaust manifolds are steel. The starter is black, and the oil filter is blue. The distributor is tan and the coil is black. The AC unit is black and when all these parts have dried, assemble the motor completely. The red circles here indicate some copyright scripts that are molded into the chassis pan. So you may want to remove those with uh, scrapers or sand and moth. Then the chassis is painted flat black with semi-gloss black frame rails and a steel tank. Then add the motor into place on the rails. Gather the interior parts now and get them finished for painting. Um, trim any flash or injection pins that you find and then give them a good coat of primer before you give them a color coat of your choice. I used a semi-gloss black. I wanted to add some realism to this vehicle so I added some carpeting by using some craft flocking and applied it to the base uh, with some white glue and then sprinkled it on and shook off the excess before I installed the seats. Assemble the seats and the door panels and then detail those uh, interior parts with a silver pen for the chrome trim and install those into the uh, chassis pan. Add the console and the shifter and then install the firewall pedals and paint and install the brake booster. The battery and the overflow bottles are also painted and installed now. Gather the dashboard, shift column and steering wheel for assembly. Assemble the steering wheel to the column and paint both of those units to match the color interior and then Use a silver marker to highlight the trim and the decals from the kit for the instrument panels. Install the dash into the interior in the slots on the side walls of the interior panels. Use some super glue to assemble the front and rear suspension assemblies and paint those semi-gloss black with steel appointments. The drive shaft is steel and the exhaust is steel and aluminum. Now paint the shocks the color of your favorite brand. Assemble the exhaust and install those and everything here seems to fit right into the post holes and slots. Now add the front suspension and then the rear suspension. The rims and tires are done next. Now paint the backs aluminum. And the rims are washed in uh, a flat black uh, mix with uh, thinned water or thinner. Uh, to give the tires a used look you can also press and roll the tread on a sheet of uh, fine sandpaper. And note that the front rim backs have a separated ring on the inside and the rear rim backs are a solid ring, so keep those separate. Add the metal pin to the rim back and install that into the tire and add a, a front to the other side. Now put a little dab of super glue at the end of that metal axle pin and install those front wheels onto the suspension. 
and then move to the back suspension and do the same thing with the rears. Make sure they continue to rotate. The model is taking shape and at this time you should have a complete and rolling chassis ready to go. Assemble the radiator, the radiator shroud and the radiator support and paint those semi-gloss black. The hoses are rubber with steel necks. You can prepare most of the body with some fine grit sandpaper, just going over it and making sure everything's smooth and has a slight finish to it. But looking at the red arrows here, you'll notice that there are some parting lines that will need some extra attention and a little extra uh, grit sandpaper. Once the body's been prepared, you're going to need to spray it with a good quality primer. Spray it on the inside and outside, start with some mist coats and then gradually build up so that you've got a good even coat. For this build, I actually used two colors from the Gravity Colors Hobby Paint selection. Green Go and a Synergy Green at 25%. Now this is a multi-stage paint and you need to cover it up with clear coat after you're done with color coats. I really like the selection of colors that Gravity's putting out. And you can buy their paint uh, online at gravitycolors.com slash US. The decals for this kit are really nice, but some of them are pretty large and have thin sections. So I really strongly recommend using some of the micro scale products to make sure they stick and conform. But start with plenty of water so that you can float them into position. And then use a damp towel to squeeze out any bubbles and follow up with the rest of the setting solution process. When it's done well, an application of bare metal foil for these older models with chrome trim really sets it off and makes it look nice. As you can see here, if you take your time and smooth it out, and make sure that it sticks where it needs to go. It really adds something to your model. Now if you really want your window glass to look crisp and clean, dip it into some Pledge Floor Care. Believe it or not, it really takes care of some of the scratches and makes the windows look really nice. Try it. Use some of that white glue or clear window cement to place the windows into the roof. Now pry the uh, sides of the body out away from the center so that you can drop the chassis into place. You see the arrows here, move them in that direction and it should just drop right in there and fit pretty tightly without any glue. Now pull out the final parts that are installed on the car and get ready to put those into the appropriate places. The, um, uh, the wa Use a wash uh, of flat black like we discussed earlier to paint the fill areas in the grill and give that uh, blacked out look and then paint the blinkers a transparent orange. Assemble all the parts onto the car. Here's what the front end will look like when completed in your color choice of course. Some of those last pieces include some of the engine bay parts so here's what that will look like too. Now bring out the parts to finish up the rear end of the vehicle. I wanted to personalize my car so I printed out a copy of my logo to use as a license tag in the rear on a color printer. That will finish up your Yenko Chevy Nova and as it's a specific model there aren't any extra parts to build or stash away. This is one of those kits that practically falls together. It's one of the kind that you, you really wish every kit was made like. It's nice to see too that there's the Yenko version that's back out in production and Revell's done a great job of keeping the molds crisp and clear. It looks good as it did the first time it was issued the fit and finish was tight and there's no issues with the build. You don't get any extra parts for this one because it's a specific model. But the options for the stripes are there so you can build a great looking Yenko version. Overall it's a great kit and fun build. We hope you've liked this step by step how to build it review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can find us on Facebook and at our website www.rideonreplicas.com. Thanks.